You're talking about simplifying rational expressions. Yeah. yeah Let great. me just say I like your T-shirt there, Mr. Haas. Yeah. Thanks. Well, yeah. you know, on the math Very on the nice. back too. Yeah. Uh, so here's a rational expression, and I think students know these rules, but they, unfortunately, they, they don't think about the problem completely. They just think about the rule. And of course, the rule here is if I am multiplying things, in this case, I'm multiplying x plus 2 times x plus 3 over x times x plus 2, I can simplify. In other words, I can, I hate to say cancel, but these divide to make 1 is really what's happening. And I can simplify. And I'm left with, of course, x plus 3 over x. And I'll write that over here, x plus 3 over x. Fantastic. And now I cannot simplify any further because I am adding something to the 3. I mean, really, I could, I could leave these parentheses. It really doesn't make a difference. But what's implied is this must happen. The parentheses really are still there. This must happen before the division. I cannot make one out of these. I cannot cancel or divide those. Fantastic. Good. So when you're dividing things, you can, sorry, when you're multiplying things, you can divide. When you're adding things, you can't divide. But I really like the way how you, you those parentheses are implied. They are which implied. Which means you have to do x plus 3, and it's that quantity that's being divided by x. That is true. Beautiful. All right. Give us another example there, Mr. Haas. Ah. Yeah, so this looks slightly familiar. Slightly familiar, but you added a little plus I three I, in the I, numerator. Yeah, I just stuck a little plus three. Mm, changes everything, doesn't it? It does change everything. And again, it's about where the parentheses are implied. I mean, it's yeah. really, this division is really saying that everybody upstairs must happen before I do the division by the stuff downstairs. Yeah. Right? So, right. really, this business has got to happen first. I, I'm adding this 3 to these guys multiplied together. I can no longer divide away the x plus Right, three. so there's no way to be doing any dividing unless you first, that is uh, true. you know, multiplied out the numerator and to see if you could and, then and factor. And maybe factor it again or something. But Who this, knows? this cannot be simplified in the form that it is. Beautiful. So, so many times students will say, oh, but the, there's multiplication. You know, x plus 2 is multiplied by x plus 3, so I should be able to divide. No, it's not enough. You, you have to look that whole numerator is being divided. Some difference, yeah, but you cannot simplify. I like it. So another way that sometimes students think about when they can divide is to think about you can divide when you have one term in the numerator and one term in the denominator. Right. right? That's another kind of handy so thing that helps. in this case, you have three terms I in the numerator? I have three terms in the numerator right. and two terms in the so denominator. So I cannot get rid of those x squared. You can't do any dividing. I'm tempted, You're but tempted. I cannot get rid of those x squared. All but right. Not in the form that it is. Right. And as you were saying before, when you have a fraction, it's implied that there are parentheses. It's implied that you're taking this whole quantity and dividing it by this whole quantity. So you can even think of PEMDAS, really. You have to deal with your parentheses, P of PEMDAS, before you're allowed to do any multiplying or dividing. Sure. Right? All right. So lots of times we think about rewriting numerators and denominators so that they are one term in the numerator and one term in the denominator so that you can then divide. Right? Got it. And we've been doing this since, you know, for at least a few years. I think oh, we yeah. can all... Oh, no, yeah. Way back to first grade, I remember yeah. factoring. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah, I think you're factoring uh, trinomials sure. in first sure. grade. Sure, sure. Yeah. All right, we've got our nice little perfect squares, difference of perfect squares. Okay, so I transformed through factoring this trinomial into a monomial. That's one term. It's something times something. Right, and I, boy, that is one of those big concepts. It's like, yes. what is a term? What is it? And boy, on the bottom, I mean, you could, uh, one might almost say it kind of looks like two terms. It's like, right, but it's one term. Right, but it's one term. It's yeah, one term. Okay. Term is a blob of things multiplied. It's this times this, right? Got it. This times that. So now we can see clearly I have one term in the numerator, one term in the denominator. Multiplication is joining those factors, and so I can divide those equal 1, and I'm left again with x plus 1 over x minus 2. Got now it. I have two terms in the top, I have two terms in the bottom, so I'm done. That's one of those kooky things. It's like you got rid of stuff, and now you have more terms on top and bottom. It's kind of funny. 
It is kind of, I mean, you could put parentheses around the top sure. there, and right? Because, right. again, that's implied. You got to do all the stuff on top, and right. you're dividing it by all the stuff on the bottom before you, right. okay. Exactly right. These are not for the faint of heart. No, they're not. They take some pain. Here we have another rational expression. So how many terms would you say we have in the numerator? Ah, ah. Well, that, I mean, that's two terms the way you wrote it. It's two terms. Clearly. One term plus another term. So right. there's no dividing that's going to happen just, you know, with one. Now, sometimes students say, well, can I divide? Can, again, we can say there's implied parentheses there. Can I divide the first term by this denominator and the second term by this denominator? Absolutely. Absolutely. But if we're going to stay with our factoring theme, let's rewrite that numerator by factoring so that it's no longer a binomial but a monomial. Rewrite that so it's one term. And I, I think you can guess what I'm doing. I'm going to factor out the common term of 2x minus 1, right? I'm left with 3x squared plus 5. And there we go. Now, this is kind of interesting because you might say, wait a minute, that's not one term in the denominator. That's two terms. I thought you were just saying you can only divide when it's two terms. Yeah. Uh, when that's it's true. one term. Yeah. But oh, it's right. 2x minus 1. The quantity is identical to 2x minus 1. So I think we're all going to be comfortable with the fact that. So I really, can. you really have to think about what you're doing. Like a yes. rule is not enough to describe this fully. Right. A rule is really never enough in math to describe this. No, and fully. you don't want to rely on just some rule. I mean, you right. really want to think about what's happening. You have to sure. think about what's happening. So PEMDAS is, if you are going to stick to a rule, PEMDAS is the overarching rule that can help you oh, simplify any expression. I'm very fond of it myself.